Jazz Standards, and you're listening to the LGS Podcast, Episode 2, where we're going to be talking about today how to properly learn a jazz standard. Obviously, this topic is really important for our website. That's that's a lot of what we focus on, learn jazz standards. It's in the name, uh, as well as a lot of other things. You know, we try to answer just about every question you might have for learning jazz, about jazz, what to listen to. I mean, if you check out our blog, uh, or if you've been following our blog for a while, uh, you'll know that we we try to cover as many things as possible, but we place an emphasis on learning jazz standards. So what more appropriate for episode two of the LJS podcast than to talk about how to properly learn a jazz standard. Um, and before I dive into that, just letting you know uh, we'd like to hear your comments, so if you uh, are listening to this on the website, um, feel free to comment below, and we'd love to hear from you, hear your opinions, um, and, and and maybe hear what how you learn jazz standards, and if you have anything to add to what I'm talking about today. Um, I think a good place to start is to ask the question, why learn jazz standards? Why, why learn jazz standards anyways? What's so important? about learning jazz standards and why do we place such a big emphasis on this? Um, Well, it's important to understand that jazz standards are the vehicles in which jazz musicians learn to improvise, okay? Uh, they're, They're a way of jazz musicians to communicate with each other, to have a common language that we use. And and not only that, it's important for every jazz musician, if you want to learn how to play jazz, you've got to understand the tradition of jazz music. You have to understand these old tunes, where they came from, what Broadway show did they come from, what film did they come from, uh, who originally wrote this song. I mean, these are important things to know and important to understand because if you don't understand the history, you're going to be lost right now. Uh, Even a lot of more modern, um, you know, big name professional jazz musicians on the scene today who who probably do a lot more original music than than standards or or they do really arranged standards and and stuff like that, they still know a lot of jazz standards and they, they started out understanding the harmony of those jazz standards, understanding the language um, and they didn't skip out on that, and that's so important to understand. I hear a lot of students sometimes say, well, I don't really need to learn jazz standards. I just write my own original music. And that's great. I'm glad you write your own original music. But unfortunately, if you're not learning jazz standards, you're kind of missing out on a big piece of, of, of learning jazz, understanding jazz, and jazz history. So it's important to learn jazz standards it's, it's the way that you're going to be able to learn how to improvise in this context. So without further ado, let's talk about, you know, five steps that I've kind of adopted for learning jazz standards. This has just been something that I've come up with uh, in my experience uh, in jazz that has just really helped me solidify a jazz standard when I'm learning it. And so I, I believe these, this is the you know, a really great way of learning jazz repertoire. And just so you know, I uh, I did, n- you know, number these in level of importance, what I think is important. So number one, I would say is even more essential than number five, um, though all of them are incredibly important to consider. So let's talk about the first step for learning a jazz standard. Number one is listen to the tune, okay? Listen to the jazz standard that you want to learn. Now, that might seem simple, that might seem obvious, but I find it interesting when uh, students of mine are learning a jazz standard, they go straight to a piece of sheet music, or they go straight to, uh, you know, just immediately trying to learn a song without really having actually heard it a lot. And I think that's the most important step is make sure you're incredibly familiar with the piece of music you're about to learn. 
So listen to that jazz standard. And when you're listening to that jazz standard, listen to a variety of versions, okay? Listen to, you know, all kinds of different artists and spend some real time with it. You know, don't don't just go, I, I'm going to learn the song and listen to it a few times and then boom, go for it. No, that's not how it works. Spend some days listening to the song. Spend some weeks listening to the song. Buy a bunch of different versions of that song. Really get that inside your head. Listen to how different jazz musicians approach that song. And begin internalizing this piece of music. And so this this is so important. And I always say listening to jazz is the most important thing. If you're not listening to jazz, you're never going to get it. And that's even more applicable when you're actually learning a specific tune. Make sure you listen to that song over and over and over again so that you can, you know, you could play it and sing it in your sleep. <laughs> that's that's how deep you want to get it into your psyche. Um, and, and, you know, we have all kinds of different resources available in this modern day and age um, to really help you do that. Um, we have YouTube. There's tons of recordings of standards all over YouTube. You could listen to tons of different versions for free on YouTube. Uh, Spotify is another great uh, resource for that. Um, I know different people have mixed opinions on Spotify and you know whether it's good or it's bad. Um, that aside, that argument aside, Spotify is a great place to just type in the name of a jazz standard. Let's say I'm learning Autumn Leaves. Okay, I type in Autumn Leaves and all of a sudden I've got hundreds of versions of autumn leaves that I can listen to right away. So Spotify is a great resource to do that. Um, you know, with with Amazon and iTunes and all of this, you can just download music, buy and download music with a snap of a finger. So more than ever, we have the resources to listen to a lot of different kinds of, of versions and recordings of a particular song. So take advantage of that. So the first thing you need to do, spend some serious time listening to the tune, getting it into your head, and understanding how a bunch of different jazz musicians have approached that song. So the next step in learning a jazz standard is learn the melody of the tune by ear. Learn the melody by ear. And you might ask, as opposed to what? Well, as opposed to learning it from a fake book or a piece of sheet music, um, that's really the last place you want to go. Um, why is it important to learn music by ear, especially for jazz? Well, learning things by ear helps you really solidify it into your memory, really solidify it and learn it, um, as opposed to just reading something off of a piece of paper. Uh, try it. If you've never done it before, try it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, also, it, that's learning things by ear is really in the tradition of jazz. Um, all those guys back in the bebop era, you know, they weren't going and finding pieces of sheet music to learn. They were going to jam sessions. They were, you know, going and hearing other guys play and learning songs that way. That That's really the tradition of jazz, is learning things by ear, not necessarily going to a piece of sheet music and reading something verbatim off of, of that piece of music. Um, oftentimes, too, if, if you have a real book or or whatever it may be, the melody isn't actually always even correct. Um, so it's better to learn things by ear to really solidify it and get it into your memory, to get into your psyche. So when you're learning a melody by ear, um, what you want to be able to do is get to the point where you can sing it first, okay? And this is a big mistake. A lot of people just start bringing it right onto their instrument, okay? You know, they're listening to that melody on the recording, and then they bring it right onto their instrument, 
And I think it's better to be able to sing it first, okay? Because if you can sing it, that means you can play it. That means it's up there in your head. That means you really know it. And that goes back to, of course, our first step, listen to the tune. You have to understand it. You have to have heard it many times so that it's really deep, deep, deep inside there. Um, so when, when learning the melody by ear, be able to sing it first before you take it onto your instrument. That's an important step that's really going to help you. Um, now, learning a melody, a, a lot of questions I get about this is, well, I listen to all these different recordings of jazz musicians playing it, and they're all playing it differently, or they're playing it in uh, you know, a different key, or they're you know, taking a lot of liberties with the melody, and that's all very true. That's the nature of jazz. You find a lot of these recordings and musicians, they're kind of, you know, going out on a limb all the time. And so it's important to find recordings when you're learning the melody. You want to find guys that are playing it fairly straight. You know, for example, I would not use uh, Miles Davis or Billie Holiday to learn the melody of a jazz standard because they're just known for taking a lot of liberties with the melody. You know, they'll stretch it here and there and they'll put inflections into it. So kind of start to get to know which artists are going to, you know, sing it very straight and true and which ones aren't. For me, kind of a go-to guy for learning the melody of a tune is actually Frank Sinatra because Frank really sings those melodies plain and simple and straight as they're as they were meant to be. So, as a little tip for you, if you're really wanting to just learn how to play a melody as straight as possible, Try to find a Frank Sinatra recording of it. Uh, Frank Sinatra is just a great guy um, for just playing that melody the way it was meant to be. So that's a nice little tip for you. So learn the melody by ear. Don't go to a fake book right away. Now, that's not to say that a fake book is all bad or a piece of sheet music is all bad. Um, they can be used as a reference. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of tools in your tool bag for learning how to play a song. But don't make that your go-to. That's a big mistake a lot of people make. Learn the melody by ear. Be able to sing it first. If you can sing it, you can play it. And then find an artist that really sings that melody straight, like Frank Sinatra. Avoid um, artists such as Billie Holiday and Miles Davis and, and others that you will, you'll recognize that they don't quite play the melody straight. The third step to learning a jazz standard is, of course, learn the harmony by ear. So we're learning the chord changes by ear. And for a lot of people, this is a challenge. Um, learning chord changes by ear really requires you to kind of already have good ears to begin with, which not everybody has that skill right away. Um, for a lot of people, it takes practice. And that's the key word. It takes practice. So you may struggle at first, and that's the same with learning the melody by ear. You may struggle at first a little bit. It may be hard. It may be a little frustrating for you, but I encourage you to really stick with it and avoid the temptation of just immediately going to a piece of sheet music. And that really is the temptation. It's, it's kind of that instant gratification thing. It's like, well, I could just look at those chord changes right now and I'll know what they are and there'll be no more mystery. But if you struggle with it, if you learn those chord changes by ear, I guarantee you, like I said before, you're just gonna know that jazz standard better. It's gonna be more stuck in your head. And an added bonus is you'll be developing your ear, which developing your ear is one of the most important things you can do for your jazz playing, for your solos, for, for listening to other members of the band and what they're doing so that you can react to what they're playing. So again, try to avoid that temptation. Resist the temptation of just going straight to a fake book. Now, when, when learning the harmony by ear, um, a lot of people ask, well, what what instrument do I listen to in a recording to try to learn that? Um, and the answer is really all of them, okay? Um, 
every instrument, whether it be the accompaniment, the accompanist, um, the the bass player, the uh, soloist, they're all giving you some interesting information that you want to be paying attention to, and you want to be p- paying attention to that anyways when you're actually playing these songs with other jazz musicians. You know, what is the soloist playing? What kind of chord is he outlining, he or she outlining? You know, so these are the things you want to pay attention to. But I would say kind of an important one to listen to is the bass player. Uh, They're telling you where those roots are. They're telling you, you know, where... You know, is this a two five one? Is this a one six two five one? Are we going from the one to the four? You know, they're kind of giving a lot of that information. And then the second person to listen to is the piano player, because the piano player is kind of filling in the blanks. You know, the bass player is laying down the foundation. The piano player is explaining the rest of the story. So, when in doubt, start by listening to the bass player. What bass note is he playing? And this. This requires a lot of stopping and starting the recording. So get on your laptop, get on your MP3 player, and start playing that. And if and if you don't know what that first chord is, stop it and go back and listen to it again and listen to it again. And you'll you'll get it. You'll eventually get it. And the more you do this, the easier it will get because you'll start developing your ear and you'll start recognizing different chord progressions. Before you know it, you'll hear a two five one and you'll know it's a two five one. Um, for example, Autumn Leaves, um, the first three chords are C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7. Okay, that's a 2 5 1 in the key of B flat major. And you'll hear that right away. And then the next set of chords is another 2 5 1, G minor, or I'm, uh, I'm sorry, A minor 7, flat 5 to D7, to G minor 7. So you'll hear that, oh, that's a 2-5 to G minor. And you'll eventually learn to recognize that, and it won't be so hard as actually identifying what every single chord is being played. You'll just be able to go, oh, I hear that's a 2-5-1. So doing this will help you recognize these chord progressions better. And, you know, have that bass, listen to that bass, But then hear what the piano player is doing. Are they altering that chord? Is that a dominant chord? Is that a minor chord? Is that a major chord? So use the whole band to your advantage. But focus on the bass player and then the piano player or guitar player. Um, No no, uh, offense to the guitar players. I'm a guitar player myself. Um, So any accompaniment instrument, listen to what they're doing. So learn the harmony by ear. And then if you want, use a fake book or a piece of sheet music as a reference later, maybe to check back on what you learned. Go through it and say, okay, this is what I think the chord changes are. And then check a variety of different kinds, uh, versions of sheet music to just say, you know, was I right there? What, what's everybody else saying? Use all the different tools in your tool bag, but start with your ear first. <laughs> So at this point, you kind of have learned the song, if you will. Like, you've you've learned the basics of the song. You now know how to play the melody. You know how to play the chords. So you you basically understand the framework of the song. You you know the guts of the song. Um, But kind of to take it to the next level of really knowing the song is to start taking the tune into different keys, okay? So you start with the original key, and then say, well, what happens if I play it in this key? Maybe the, the, the tune was in C major. Well, what happens if I play it in B flat major? Um, and you can go and, and, and pick your own keys. You don't have to do all 12 keys. That is very ambitious. It's a great idea. It's a great thing to practice. But in general, just try to take it through at least three different keys. And you'll find that when you take the song into different keys, you'll really start understanding how it works because it's going to force your brain to think about what function each chord plays in the song. Not the muscle memory that you may have developed or 
you know, just memorizing, oh, the chords in this key are this, 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 and this. But taking it to a new key is going to force your brain to, to think bigger, to think harder, to think how does this whole song work together to form its purpose. So take the song into different keys. It, it, it really is incredibly helpful. And we, all, and we always talk about this on our blog, you know, taking lines into different keys, taking, you know, you know, pieces of, of licks and, and phrases into different keys. It's so important. It's so helpful. It builds your ear like crazy. And it just helps you understand how to play that particular piece of musical information in any different context. So if you want to really take it to the next level to really solidify and know that song, you know, make sure you're taking that tune into different keys. It's really going to help. It's really going to just make that tune work for you. And so that you're not stuck in a situation where maybe you're forgetting the song or maybe you don't know it as well as you should. Taking the song into different keys is kind of taking it to the next level. So the last but not necessarily least important step is find some people to jam with, okay? Find a group of people, whether it's one person, uh, two people, three people, th- doesn't matter. Find someone to jam with on that song, okay? Because this is the, this is incredibly important. You have to have people to play with. I mean, that's what jazz is about. Jazz is a communal kind of a music. It's a music that we do together. It's a participatory music. We, we all come together and we share together what we're playing, what we're doing. And so there's no better way to really solidify a song and truly learn a song by just playing it over and over and over again with other people. Um, it's Whenever I'm playing gigs at, at, at bars and restaurants where my purpose is more, you know, serving as a background kind of a music, um, I just play through a bunch of standards, a lot of different songs. And especially if I've learned a new one recently... I'll make sure to throw that into the mix. And every single week that I have a gig like that, I'll be, I'll be playing those songs. Um, it's incredibly important. Now, in college, I had a buddy that I would always practice with. Okay, He was a fellow guitar player, so it was kind of convenient. And we were also roommates. And so we would always be practicing together and playing songs together. You know, In the middle of the day, we would just start jamming for hours and playing over songs and that was so valuable for me it just helped me learn so much music and really solidify it um, so that by the time I went out on the gig those songs were in my head you know I was used to playing those songs so it's really important um, to jam with other people now I understand not everybody is in that situation I've I've had um, you know lessons with with folks that that you know, Skype lessons that, that live in areas of the world that there's just not a lot, of, a lot of other jazz players or they haven't really gotten plugged into a jazz community yet. And, you know, that's okay. But start trying to find people you can play with. Um, it's okay to use play-along tracks. You know, on our website, we do provide play-along tracks. Um, they do serve a purpose. They are a nice tool to use. But ultimately, you want to find people that you can play with. So, if you don't have someone like that now or a group of people like that now, really make it a top priority to go and seek that out. Try to find where that jazz community is in your city. And if there isn't a jazz community in your city, try to start one. Try to reach out to people that live in your area to come together and play. You know, Be the leader and create the scene for yourself. So the, the, the last but not necessarily least important is find someone to jam with to practice the jazz standard that you've just learned. And 
And that's all for our episode today. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And if you have anything else to add, if you have any um, ways that you'd like to share that you learn jazz standards, we'd love to hear from you. So leave us a comment in the comment section below if you are listening to this on the website. And if you're not connected with the Learn Jazz Standards community now, you can do that by going to www.learnjazzstandards.com slash newsletter, where you can sign up for our newsletter. That's really the best way to get connected with us and to find out all that's new on Learn Jazz Standards. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Um, in addition, as a little extra perk, you do get a free ebook, A Jazz Guide to Practicing. So definitely check that out. And I do want to point out one other thing. On Monday, we came out with our uh, ebook, 15 Essential Jazz Etudes. It's an ebook that focuses on a learning jazz language. Uh, it's a collection of 15 jazz solos that comes with 15 play alongs and a recording of each uh, etude so that you can learn how to play them and just help Im improve your jazz language. So I encourage you to check that out. You can find that in our store under ebooks. Uh, we have versions in C instruments. Um, for upright and electric bass and one with guitar tabs as well as regular notation. So definitely check that out. Uh, we hope you join us for our episode number three next week. Mm -hmm.